On this segment of Horizon TV, we're dealing with diversity and workforce development. And in particular, we're gonna talk about Construct Reach, a group founded by Paul and Ebony Robinson, and we'll learn more about I Built This, an outreach that exposes middle and high school students to careers in construction. Ebony and Paul, thank you for joining us. Thank you for thank having you. us. And you know, our audience, uh, they live the skilled labor shortage and the aging workforce with every project. And I've had home builders tell me that you know, they've gone to community colleges, they've made presentations in high school classrooms, they've approached guidance counselors to fill openings that they have, and they've had no success. How can Construct Reach bridge that gap for builders or contractors that are looking to hire young people or to, you know, stoke that pipeline of uh, skilled labor? Yeah, yeah. I mean, that is, that's one of the unique things about Construct Reach. We, we understand the perspective that a lot of young people have uh, in terms of the industry. And sometimes it's a limited perspective as to the different career pathways that one can take, but also sometimes there's the negative connotation that's out there already about the construction industry, how it may not be for them. And so the I Built This event takes into account uh, their perspective and we utilize those events to reposture the industry. And so it is not just introducing them to different career pathways, but it is connecting with them where they are understanding where they come from and being able to relate to them and create an experience that is relevant for them. So they are uh, not only just learning about the industry at large, but they are participating in hands-on activities that correlate to whatever project that we are working on. And it introduces them to the different career pathways that exist within the industry that they probably did not know about prior to coming. And we create an experience that is memorable for them. There's a lot of things that is incorporated into there besides just learning uh, to where we get a chance to engage them and communicate on a lot of different levels. I see you and we're working collectively to bring these opportunities to you. But also consolidating the effort, right? So maybe those GCs or the Home Builder Association maybe haven't found the right niche, but Construct Reach aims to be a facilitator, right? And so maybe you haven't reached out to the educator or within our educational network and also our national efforts with uh, organizations like ASCA and CPE to really help facilitate the opportunities and make them really available both to counselors and instructors, but also letting the GCs know there may be times where that educator may not have all the readily available information to give to that student. We can do brown bags, we can host events through even our social network post IB, IBT that I built this event to make sure those relationships are still thriving between the GC and the educator. So maybe we can learn more about that network uh, with your answer to this next question. I mean, how did you get uh, this initiative going? Paul, I understand that uh, you are a project engineer with Target. Uh, I built this as in conjunction with Target Corporation, a big box retailer. So tell me how you went from that career to doing yeah. this. Yeah, very, very interesting. I was. I was a project manager for, for, Target, Corpor for uh, Target Corporation for about six or seven years and, um, you know, began to kind of, you know, do more things in my community uh, to, to be a tangible example and do more community development initiatives or what have you. And, you know, when we started Construct Reach, um, it's pretty much a culmination of some of the efforts that were already taking place. We knew that there was a need to reposture the industry and being able to come onto a live construction site, uh, you know, and you already have a brand that resonates as something completely different than construction. So that was a way to pretty much create an event that has become like our flagship event called I Built This to where we could reposture the industry of construction because we're introducing it in a different light. And then we're also working collectively with industry partners and putting on this event in a way that, that captures them, that exposes them to different opportunities, but also it creates uh, professional contacts right, and networking that can take place and people are sharing their journey about how they got to where they are and then actually having actionable steps that puts them in position to make identified actionable steps kind of going forward after the event. And so not just the event itself, but creating uh, the event that allows for it to be a springboard into them moving forward to going into an industry that has been good to us. Yeah. So it's not just parachute in and then you're gone after the event, there's like a linkage uh, for, right. for people who are interested to follow up and learn more, as well as for employers to yeah. tap into that, that is... research. Ebony, how did you uh, get into this initiative? 
Well, it's uh, interestingly enough, I have more of a sales and marketing background. Um, and so Paul has the story of where he didn't hire me because I was his wife. He hired me <laughs> because I was good, right? So that's been a total blessing to be a part of it since his birth, right? Incubation mm -hmm. period, but also to come alongside Paul to really help um, grow the organization, to really help to establish these relationships. So what we talked about earlier with those educators, right? A lot of times when you're thinking about that resource and that bridge of accessibility, not just for the educator, but the parent, as well as the student, it happens based on relationships. So um, I've just been able to do that throughout my career and I really find a way creating opportunities for the next generation, but that is through the relationship. So we can't be, I've been able to, to be here now for two years alongside my husband, his better half, but also yes. his colleague um, and leading Construct Reach to make sure that um, we are providing tangible access. Because you got to think about it. Construction still has that 1970 view of just the hard head and the hammer. So we have to reposition the industry, not just for the industry, but also for the educator, also for the student, and even the parent who has a, a huge influence on the student's journey, right? Whether they go to college, a tech school, or even coming into the workforce right after post-secondary. And you've had events recently in Chicago. Uh, yes. You were in Minneapolis before that. What other stops are you making uh, in the near future? Oh, God, stay tuned. It's a lot in the works right now, right? right? Uh, of yes. course, we want to be in our hometown. Uh, we want to look at the Southeast market. Once again, we had great success where we kicked off our national initiative um, in two, 2019. Um, and so we want to kind of re get re-engaged. But as you think about this, hybrid and virtual experience, we're now getting ready to shift back to in-classroom learning. So that really will be okay. contingent on that piece as well. But what we found in Chicago is to do a hybrid, right? That that virtual content is still a, a value add because let's say a school district maybe is 50 miles away, but uh, maybe that student is getting ready to graduate move closer to the city, right? Like in a Chicago market where they're in the suburbs versus the city limits, they still may, may want to be interested, yeah. right? In those opportunities as well. And yeah, so not of course in St. Louis. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Well, Paul, in a previous interview, I, I heard you mention uh, that approached right, construction and relationships can repair the community. Can you elaborate on that point? Yeah. You know, I think, um, you know, construction is one of the, the few industries that, um, that hashes so many different correlations just to everyday life. And when, when you think about the, the industry and, and where it is, um, you know, we exist because of a need to, to address the underrepresentation of minorities within the construction industry. And when you think about where we are as a society, um, you know, we are, we're, we're seeing that we can no longer compartmentalize what happens in the workplace and what happens in our societies at large. And the industry of construction is unique in that, you know, it foundations matter. Right, it matters what you build on, uh, and that's just speaking from a from a from a construction standpoint, right? Um, but that translates into life as well. And then when you think about how construction takes place, where there's so many different um, partners, there's so many different subcontractors that 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 play a role in the construction and the completion of of any space or. Or, or any facility or what have you, you know, you have your electricians, you have your plumbers, you have your HVAC or what have you. Uh, so you have all of these people who are gifted in different areas, but those areas play a key role in making a building, right? And when you think about us at large, like everybody has something to offer. Uh, nobody has everything, which keeps us in constant need of one another, right? So we are designed, we're built for a community. We are built to collaborate and work collectively together. And so construction has a lot of overlap into, into just life in general. And it's not about what we build, but it's, it's how we build because construction takes place in plain view in front of society and in the context of community. You see it happening all the time, whether you get the signs to say detour because there's work taking place right in front of you or because you see a facility or a high rise building going up, it's taking place right in front of you. And so it's, it's, it's talking to the industry partners and letting them know that, hey, we have a key role to play uh, because this is not only uh, an industry where you can, you can have a successful career, but it's an industry that is a huge economic indicator, right? It's a large industry. And also 
it's one that really should be leaning into the progress that we do need to make in terms of more equity and more diversity and more representation within this industry. And so uh, being able to, to be intentional about how we build and, and making it a, a community effort or bringing visibility to that because the industry is in need of younger, diverse and fresh talent. So we need to be more intentional and more thoughtful about how we engage the community and how we pull in other key partners and collaborate collectively as we're building something. And that has the potential uh, to not only just transform a person's life, but families and then communities thereafter. Yeah. You know that hunger is out there, but I wonder, cause I've heard from other uh, workforce development recruiters, their experiences, they'll go into a high school and uh, they'll approach an administrator and a guidance counselor, and they run into this bias against construction, either because uh, they don't think it's good enough for their kids or their kids are gone. They want their kids to go to college. There is this bias there. And uh, I mean, have you engaged in that resistance or, you know, what kind of experience are you having with getting busloads or whatever of uh, uh, kids to attend? I built this. Yeah. You know, I would say, um, one of the reasons that we don't get a lot of, of pushback and that we have people raising their hands to attend this event is because the I built this event and even our business model and structure, it's, it's informed, right? So before we even started, we did the research yeah. and we talked to all of these different stakeholders. We talked to young people and we talked to parents and we talked to educators and we talk to other workforce development organizations. These are all key stakeholders that play a large role in the construction industry pipeline. But we wanted to make sure that we heard their pain points and we heard it from their perspective and we saw it through their lens. And that informed us that, you know what, there's a facilitator that's needed within this industry. There's a relationship builder that's needed within this industry. And so we're not just reaching out to schools to invite them to come out to an event we are establishing relationships with them and asking them, hey, how can we better service you so that we put you in a position to provide uh, informed information and up-to-date information uh, to your students and not only your students, but their parents as well. You know, and so that's where we begin to, to get a lot of positive feedback is because we're in ongoing dialogue and communications and establishing working relationships with those stakeholders, with uh, educators who are who see themselves a lot of times as the gatekeepers, mm -hmm. right? Because you have these young people, these adolescents who are transitioning from adolescence to young adulthood, where there's a lot of uh, key decisions that they have to make, and they're trying to figure out what's available to them based on their resources, based on their financial position, based on their grades, and based on their location. And so counselors and educators, they feel like they're the gatekeepers. And so it's important for us to come alongside um, and, and resource them as much as possible and to hear what their needs are. And if they see us delivering on those needs and really committed and playing the long game and not just coming just to, to get a position or to, to feel a position and just getting a body, but really interested in understanding things from their perspective so that we can better service them, so that they can better serve their students and be a better educator, uh, then that's where we get the buy-in. Yeah, and then also be able to mitigate to false point, right, about the bias, but also, again, resourcing them. Maybe there's mentorship opportunity, maybe there's internship, work-based learning opportunity that, that one company can take prior to that person graduates. So let's say it's a senior, right? They're getting ready to graduate. Maybe that's a work-based opportunity, work-based learning opportunity when they're in that CPU pathway. So we've been intentional also to work with schools that have a construction and project management and or electrician um, and manufacturing kind of pathway to talk about that, to have brown bag conversations, bringing the industry into those classrooms and then talking that up. So when that spring semester comes, those graduates are now informed, right, with the with the in-row points, whether it's, again, collegiate, tech school, or coming right into maybe a apprentice program, depending on where they are um, throughout the country. Yeah, and uh, some, oh, and, oh, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off, but some, sometimes, um, you know, you have to, you have to think about, um, because some of those, some of those negative connotations that exist, some are valid and some are invalid, right? So we have to own some of those things. But one of the things that, you know, we try to be very intentional about is 
if we're going to, to speak to educators or if we are doing a, uh, a live Q&A session with a, with a school or a classroom, it's making sure that we understand who our audience is and understanding how important it is for you to see yourself in a position. Because if you can see yourself there, then you, you think that you have a shot, right? And so um, being able to identify with individuals that can relate to them and look like them and know where they come from uh, is, is huge as well. And so we don't want to undervalue that. Like that's very significant and very important. If we're talking about the need for more representation and more diversity within the industry um, or how it's you know maybe white male dominated or it, it's, it's not a lot of young people, then it's important for us to say, well, hey, you know what? Well, yeah. let's showcase how it's the industry has been good for maybe that demographic that you don't really see right. and say that, hey, it is for you and the industry needs you. And so now you can come in and add value as well. And so it's being able to understand those things, but also being able to own it and, and figure out, okay, well, how do we, how do we get around these barriers or how do we get around the, the negative connotations that exist? Uh, and that comes through relationship building, that comes through hearing um, the, the perspectives of not only just the educators, but you know, the, the talent that the industry is in need of. And so it's being able to, to kind of validate their voice, their perspective, their view, and allowing that, that dialogue and that interaction to be both um, informing to the industry side, but also for the industry to um, educate on, on maybe some of those things that are not valid, mm -hmm. right? Because one of the things that uh, a lot of young people do not know is how much money you can make within this industry yeah. and you know how you can really establish a good living. And so that's one of the, that's always one of the, uh, the eye opening and the, the jaw dropping expressions that we get is when we introduce like how much you can earn within this industry. And of course, that's always like one of the first questions that young people ask us as well, so. <laughs> well, I think a media aspect of Construct Reach too is you have a social media network where your prospects can see what's happened to the people who's gone, who have gone before them, or even, you know, actually like, you know, in an internship at, at right now and, and see their progress and, and see what's going on and what it might be like for them. And maybe that's kind of a linkage to say, hey, that could be me too. Um, I'm wondering, so we, we talked about schools and, and the bias. Are contractors and unions more open to this, to your recruiting them to participate? I mean, what do you see on that side of the equation? Yeah, I think it's... It, the industry is not the way it is um, because of um, one thing, right? Like there's a reason why the industry is the way that it is. And we know that, um, you know, you have union and you have non-union. And for us, you know, we, we had to hear it from both sides, right? right. That's, that's one of, that's part of the research that we did on the front end is really taking the time to listen to all stakeholders and you do. You, you have union, you have non-union, they have a perspective, they have a vantage point that they are looking at things through. Um, and we wanted to validate that, we wanted to hear that, but we also wanted to create a table collectively so that we can talk through, okay, well, how do we move forward? You know, how do we get past working in, in these silos? Because if we continue to do things uh, the way that we have been doing things, then we cannot go forward. And we know that the construction industry is, is growing right now. Uh, there's this labor shortage that is hovering over the industry where you have a generation that is retiring out, but we're not backfilling those positions at the same rate. And so it's important then to, to kind of cast vision and to recast vision about, hey, this is where we're trying to go collectively. We're all a part of this industry, even though we are, you know, in our, in our different areas and different niches or, or different associations or what have you. But we're still, we still fall under the umbrella of this industry and the industry as a whole needs to go forward. So how can we get people uh, who want to go forward where it's all boats rise, right? Uh, and lock arms to, to really build the traction that we need and to make this, this sector of work uh, attractable and, and competitive for a younger demographic. And so those are the conversations that we had to have and, and that we constantly have um, you know, with all of our industry partners. And so uh, union, non-union, they've been great partners thus far. And we just have to keep recasting that vision 
And when we have events like this, like an I built this event, this is where we're able to, to showcase uh, the significance of us working together. Mm -hmm. And we have a, a direct um, kind of tangible example for us to say, hey, look at what we can do when we work together and look at the benefit that we have to communities and the young talent that we need for this industry. And so uh, that helps a lot when we're able to draw everybody's attention mm -hmm. back to a tangible example about us working together and how uh, successful that it is. And let's be honest, there's yes. no better time to do it and lean in, right, to diversity, equitability, and inclusion than now, because the industry needs young, diverse talent. And mm -hmm. we've seen a great response in our industry partners, and we can't wait to keep doing this together. The uh, criticism of uh, construction industry employers is that, and this maybe goes to the point that a lot of young people weren't aware of how much money you can make in construction, but even then, um, the industry or employers maybe don't, are, are less, overt about laying out the career path. Like, all right, we're going to start you at this much per hour, and this is what you're going to be doing. But they don't say, and then maybe you can move up to assistant project manager and project manager, or, you know, uh, get uh, more experience and buy your own truck and start your own company, that kind of thing. Do you see the employers that you include with Constructor Each and EI built this initiatives, are they a little more overt about uh, doing that? Uh, kind of laying out the, the career path for a young person? Yeah, I would say, you know, the one of the um, the other aspects of Construct Reach, you know, we, we do events like I Built This, and that's a culmination of a lot of the work that we do. But um, we also try to consult the industry on, on being uh, more forward thinking and creating an environment to where young people want to want to stay right so create an affinity not for um just the the industry but for that company that they have an, an experience with and so part of that is bringing visibility to a career pathway and a career track right so it's like okay well this is entry level but this is where you can go this is how it dovetails into different things that's important you know for a young person coming in they want to see not only what they can get today, but where that will lead them into tomorrow. Right. And so, yeah, one of the one of the things that we do with companies as we create their formalized internship programs, and we begin to be very hands on about their outreach efforts and creating, you know, their their onboarding and, and curriculum or what have you for their internship programs for their new hires or what have you is beginning to, to rethink uh, kind of how they introduce jobs and what that job could potentially lead to because that helps with attracting more talent. Once they can see a pathway, mm -hmm. then that allows them to be more open to the entry level. Okay. Yeah. Well, this is the fun part. Why don't you tell us some success stories that uh, came out of Construct Reach and the I Build It uh, visits? Or I built this. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> One person that comes to mind is uh, Kenoshia. Uh, Kenoshia came through our I built this building really event that we did uh, Lake Street's Target Store post uh, George Floyd, and she was a single mother. Uh, did as a waitress, did a career change. Right, went through the apprenticeship program. Uh, from the apprenticeship program, we had one of our um, current clients and partners, uh, ECI, be a part of that. She came on board full time with them. Right now, she's thriving as an assistant project manager, traveling throughout the Midwest, cool. uh, getting ready to go back to finish out and kind of go deeper in her uh, academia within construction management. And she is just loving it and just thriving. And she's able, we're able to kind of follow her, right? Follow that journey. It's been a year now of her coming full time into the industry. Um, and that's kind of the impact that we make, right? To have a, a young, diverse talent think about the industry as a, it's like, wow. You know, just a switch, a career switch, which, but then kind of tapping into her and the gifts and abilities to really thrive. And now that we've partnered with that organization, she's able to come into the, our curriculum, come into our development alongside the organization to really kind of see where, where her strengths are and continue to thrive. And now even when to again, invest in herself and her future education as well. Yeah. She's probably going to be an ambassador as well for you guys too. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, you know, when you think about I built this, it, it has it has a twofold objective uh, in terms of younger people. So when you think about I built this, I mean, that is a statement that is an empowering statement and construction allows 
for you to do that. Um, every day, you know, you can leave a construction site and you can see your progress, right? And that's something that you can be proud of to say, hey, I, I built this, right? Something that's going to create a positive experience in my community. I was a part of, of doing that, right? So it's empowering for those young people to be part of something like that. But they also get a chance to be a new model of success because we highlight them and we feature them and we promote them and it's all about them. And so now they get a chance to, to be empowered and then they also get a chance to be a new model of success. And that's building advocates, right, for the industry because now they can relate to those who come from similar backgrounds. And now that younger person who sees them being empowered can now see themselves within the industry. And so it kind of has that ripple effect. Um, you know, we've had, we've had a, a, a recent graduate from high school that participated uh, in the I Built This event. We, we empowered him. We kind of really spotlighted him, a 19-year-old or what have you. Um, he was able to land a full-time position there during the event uh, to become an electrician. And, and now, you know, he's, he's, he's a new model of success for his younger siblings. And so his younger siblings now are interested within the industry of construction and they weren't prior to right. his experience. And so we have just a lot of those different uh, success stories that, you know, we're, we're very proud to, to be a part of um, because you really get a chance to see the transformation and the the potential that this has and so uh, having industry. partners come alongside yeah and having industry partners that you know are are part of it saying that man like this is this has been great this has been amazing like this is what it looks like to really take theory and put it into practice uh -huh. right because especially during this time now you know you have a lot of public statements about moving the needle forward uh in terms of you know dei or what have you but really, really being a part of the I Built This events and other different community outreach events or what have you, it allows for them to, to see that brought uh, uh, into very tangible expressions and the practicality of that. And that's exactly what our communities are looking for, is not so much the, the words or the statements that you're for something, but what does that mean for me, right? And, 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 and how can I feel and touch you know, those words? What does that mean? How do you live those out? And so um, it's been very, very, very fulfilling uh, to be part of this type of work, uh, especially during a time like this because we need it. Yeah, so we yeah. get the young people's right experience and exposure and accessibility to opportunities, but as well as the industry saying like, wow, okay, we can all, be, we can build this together. Uh, let me, how can I be a part of this again? Um, where we have technology, robotics, you know, your, your skilled trades, right? The brands that everybody wants to kind of lean in a little bit more. We also gain that interest as well, in addition to having this youth be exposed. Well, guys, continued success in many, many, many more cities. And Ebony, Paul, I want to thank you for joining us on Horizon TV and sharing your wonderful insights about diversity and workforce development. Thank you very much. Thank you for All having right. us. Thank you so much.